Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Main Lube Lubricants, and your local Repco store. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Yes, the first episode in Series 20. Thanks to the continued support of my major sponsors, Shannon's Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants, and of course your local Repco store, scattered across Australia and New Zealand as well. I'd like to mention Shannon's Insurance because they're a fantastic insurance company that just have so much to offer you. Why not pick up the phone and give them a call on 13 46 46 for a quote, or visit them online at shannons.com.au. You. And while you're there, why not sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club? And Main Lube Lubricants, they're a really cool sponsor as well because you can send away an oil sample from either your engine, transmission, gearbox or diff and receive a full analysis report to see how your current oil is protecting your investment. Check them out at mainlube.com.au. And of course your local Repco store gives you the experience as soon as you walk through their door, whether you're a trades customer or a retail customer such as myself. $50 million worth of more parts for more cars? Who can say no to that? You can visit your local Repco store with branches around Australia and New Zealand and also online at repco.com.au and repco.co.nz. On today's show, I'm going to bring you something with a bit of a difference, something that you don't see every day. It's machinery at its very best, and some of it was really something before electricity. Welcome to the Campbelltown Steam and Machinery Museum Field Day. Located around an hour's drive southwest of Sydney, you'll find a little place called Menangle. Now, today's event has more people letting off steam than you can ever imagine. Interesting thing is, we forget about these industrious marvels that were the entree to our petrol engines that we love today. Oil, steam and kerosene field days, well, they celebrate Australia's past. You'll see working displays of industrial, agricultural and civil machinery including tractors, traction engines, oil engines, a two-foot gauge railway and antique earth-moving displays. Time for Andrew now. How are you, mate? Pretty good, Flats. How are you? Good, mate. What have we got going here? Uh, I've got a field marshal, a Series 2 field marshal. So it's, um, it's about 1948, 1949, somewhere around there. So I love these things, the way it just sits there and hops up and down. Single cylinder, right? Yep, one cylinder. Yeah, so. What's the capacity? Uh, five litres. Five litres? Yep, one cylinder. <laughs> oh, gee, no wonder she's moving up and down. Five litres, one cylinder. That's just absolutely awesome. She's a rocker and a roller. So it's flat out at 750 revs. So It'd be very talky, Andrew, to pull anything. Yeah, pretty talky. So it doesn't need very many revs to be able to pull and push, you know. So it's pretty good. Mate, the way it moves around, you could just sit up there with your wife sitting on your lap and you wouldn't have to do any work. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Andrew, for catching up today, mate. And have fun with this, because this is what it's all about. I mean, you know, classic restos can cover so much genre of so many different types of machinery. We've had one of these on the show before at Clarendon. It's great to see another one come along, mate. Good on you, Andrew. Excellent. It's a pleasure to meet you, Pletch. Thanks, mate. Terrific. It's great fun for all of the family as well. If there's anything that whirs, hisses, bangs and pops in all of its mechanical glory, you'll find it here. Guess you could say that it's your lucky day pass to a step back in time. mechanically minded it takes in so many different types of machines and I've got to say I love steam locos I've always had a thing about them how are you Greg I'm fantastic Fletch and yourself good mate good this is a beautiful little engine what can you tell us about it well its history was that it was built around about 1912 somewhere around there and uh, it went into service in various locations and it ended up in Coromel Coal and Coke and it's a, a little two-foot gauge engine and what it used to do was shunt some of the coal uh, things up into where the, uh, the railways were. And um, it ended its life there and then uh, one of the owners built, uh, bought it from there and built it up here and we've been running it ever since here. 
Tell us, Greg, being a small engine, what's its capabilities like in terms of tonnage? What could it actually pull? Uh, probably around about the 100 ton mark. Really? Yes. Maybe even a little bit more, about 120 ton, yes. Talk about the little engine that could. That's amazing. Now, with, exactly. with you working on this smaller style of, of uh, locomotive, does it give you an appreciation for what it must have been like for our guys, our early pioneers that were like on the Newcastle Flyer and all those really big locos? Sure does, because it's just scaled down. It's just a smaller version of what the real things are. Everything else is exactly the same. Yeah. It works on steam. It works on... You still have to have manual firing exactly like that. So I mean, You think of days of, like, you know, 38, 40-degree heat and the guys are there stoking the fires. Like they, they would have been hard days. Oh, yes, it's very hard. Even in winter, this gets very hot and uh, we, we, we need our water and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and put the rag on there to stop the sweat from pouring down. And what interests yeah. me, too, is the, keeping the momentum up with these steam locos, like when they were out on a long run hauling freight or passenger cars, like keeping that steam pressure up so that they didn't run out of puff on hills. Like they must have, the engineers in the day must have had a, a fantastic knowledge of uh, exactly where they were on the line. Well, that's, that's the thing with steam engines. It's, it's the, the crew. The performance of the engine is only as good as the crew is. So if the driver is using too much steam and the fireman's not getting the, the fire right and the water level's right, it doesn't get the performance. You know, these days with diesels, they just sit there and press a button and just go like this. But with the steam engine, if the fireman doesn't get it right and he loses pressure, their stuff. Good on you, Greg. Nice talking to you, mate. And uh, it's interesting catching up with a bloke like this because what a machine. That's just awesome. Good on you, mate. Thank you, Fletch. History buffs, families and especially children will be able to marvel at machinery from a bygone era at the biannual Campbelltown Steam and Machinery Museum's field days. And this museum hosts a fascinating display from its unique collection of vintage steam and internal combustion, agricultural and industrial engines every May and October. See how Shannon's Insurance can help you by picking up the phone and giving them a call on 134646. You can also visit Shannon's online as well at shannons.com.au. While you're there, sign up and become a member of the Shannons Club. Then there's Main Lube Lubricants for some amazing oils and computer analysis on your current oil and how it's protecting your investment. They've also got in-house technology to back it up as well. Go to mainlube.com.au and your local Repco store scattered across Australia and New Zealand. Visit repco.com.au and repco.co.nz. We have John Boardman now, President. How are you, John? Not bad, Fletch. It's away, mate. What a day. You've done well. It's looking good. The weather's been kind to us today. The wind's up a bit, but uh, sunny, not rainy. Mate, with the surname of Boardman, that's totally the opposite. You wouldn't be bored here today. Not today. Having a good day, watching lots of new machinery come in. A um, lot of variety today that we haven't seen for a while. John, tell us, what does the club stand for, mate, in terms of progress and where you're up to? Um, well, the place is 30 years we've been here. Um, it's progressed from being a steam predominant uh, club to encompassing, it, encompassing anything that's industrial, uh, be it tractors, trucks, engines, um, anything to do with the industrial heritage. Yeah. Such a variety too, that's what's so good about this. It is, it is. You, you come here every time you'll see something different, yeah. uh, new restorations or, or something that hasn't been run for a long time. Yeah. Um, yes, there's always something new. Yeah. Train, tractors, trucks, classic cars over on the other side. We've got military vehicles, just a whole cross section. It's anything and everything. Any club's welcome to come to a show um, and the grains are available for people to use. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity for people. Um, many other clubs say that you know the opportunity to come here and camp for the weekend, yep. they just they don't knock it back. It's amazing. John, have you got a website? We do. Um, if you go to CSMM, um, it'll pull up the, the website. Yep. And uh, there's a history of the club, machinery under restoration, yeah, that's good. Uh, links to other clubs. That's great. So, yeah. That's very good. Now, look, you practice what you preach as well. You've got your own piece of equipment behind us. What's the run down there, John? Um, this is a Johnson 2HG. Uh, they're an English uh, dump truck. Before Bobcats um, used a site dumper and a shovel, shovel it in by hand and pull a lever and tip it off. Uh, so early 60s, uh, mid? 1960s, yep. yeah, little single cylinder pad of diesel. Yep. Uh, three speed and one reverse. Yep. Um, very handy piece of gear. Yeah. You know, we use it here. I, I've restored it. 
Um, but, you know, we, a month ago we put a metre of concrete in it and took it up the creek to put it in place and never missed a beat. It's just so nice. Thanks, John. No worries. Thanks, Fletch. Pleasure to have you here. Talk about open up Pandora's box of goodies. We have Remington now. How are you, Remington? G'day, Fletch. I'm good. That's so, mate, you're a really creative guy. You've got two things to tell us. Let's start with this tractor first. Mate, where did the thought come from to put the Cleveland V8 in the tractor? Well, we've thought about it for a while. Something interesting to, you know, spice up the museum. Something that will draw the next generation of tractor and steam enthusiasts to the museum. And that's where we thought about the idea of a V8 tractor. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen a few around, but rarely do we actually see them in, in our location, around Campbelltown. So we decided to put V8 Cleveland 302 yeah. in, a, in a Ferguson tractor. <laughs> And you just haven't put a V8 in a tractor. You've done it remarkably well. Attention to detail. It's painted nice. It sits in there nice. All your wiring's got cable ties around it. You've done it properly. It's not a roughie. No, definitely not. It's definitely uh... There'd be a lot of guys watching thinking, oh, G302 sitting in a tractor. I'd love that for my car. Yeah, well, it's got a lot of power. and We don't race around here. We just calmly drive around. It's a great showpiece. Yeah. It really is. So tell us, Remington, with the drive line, it'd be almost indestructible, wouldn't it? Almost, yeah, yeah, almost. And also with two, two, uh, two flywheels bolted together, yeah. it has a lot of momentum behind it as well. Yeah, right. So in first gear, there's nothing going to stop you. Oh. God, and you've got the cheese cutters up front, mate. It's not the sort of thing you'd want to be hooking into a corner. No, no. <laughs> Just think he could hook it into a corner and he could have a plough hanging off the back as well. Oh, speed plough, yeah. <laughs> Some blades underneath and mow the end patch while you're going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When did the idea come to you? I heard on the grapevine it was something like a two o'clock in the morning decision. How did it come about? We actually saw a video on YouTube of a tractor over in Sweden or something or other and it had giant wheels on the back and it was but it was a smaller motor than this one yeah. but we decided and seeing that there was a V8 for sale in the museum yep. what a great idea and what a great opportunity to put one in a V8 uh, in, a, in a Ferguson. Okay, uh, V8 engine aside tell us about the Ferguson quickly got the year model and where, where you got it from. About 1958 we got it from Corowra, New South Wales and it was just sitting in a barn. It had been painted, but unfortunately the engine block had a giant hole rusted in the side of the, the water cavity. So instead of repairing the, v, the TE20 motor, we put in a V8. Good on you, Remy. I love what he's done. Not only has he saved the life of a tractor, he's saved the life of a poor old Clevo, and he's made it look fantastic. Put it in the tractor. Good on you, buddy. Well done. You. Now, you're not going to get away that easy. Come with me now. We've got something else to show you now. Before we move over there, what is it? It's a 1902 Marshall Britannia steam portable engine. Portable? What, 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 portable? <laughs> Port what? Well, you pick it up and carry it around. Oh, you tow it. It's about eight tons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go and have a look at this thing. <laughs> look at this. You know, just when you think you've seen some things and you might think you know a little bit, you can come along to a day like this and you find out there's just so much more to learn. Remington, you're quite the young engineer, aren't you? Sort of, yeah. You could say that. How old are you? Sixteen. 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 Is this the uh, next up-and-coming generation or what? You're incredible. You're amazing. Tell, tell us about this steam engine. Tell us how it works. Well, it's, it was built in 1902 and it's a Marshall single-cylinder slide valve, basically steam, steam portable engine. It came from Mudgee and it, we used to work on a shearing shed up in Mudgee on a station called Louis, Louis Station in Mudgee. Anyway, the engine was brought here to the museum in about 1970 and it was restored by a, an elderly fellow to working condition and I've just preserved it and kept it running for posterity for future generations. Remington, uh, explain how it works like with the pressure side of things and the steam and the valving and all that type of thing. It's quite complicated but basically speaking there's a boiler filled with water you put the fire. You put the, you put a fire inside the inside the boiler, and there are tubes which carry the flames through the boiler, basically. And the pressure goes up, and it runs a steam engine, which is placed on top of the engine. And the steam engine turns around, and with the flywheel, you can operate things and run things and. That's what it is, yeah. I've got to say this again as well. I've said it many times on the show before. We lend ourselves to technology in an era of computers. I still can't get my head around the guys or the people involved that designed these early machines. It would have been mathematics, a creative mind, pencil and paper. Just incredible. Yeah, definitely, Fletch. 
It's as if this world, we're lacking people like that with a creative mind that are yeah. developing is, is what you're interested in, and cars, and steam engines are almost non-existent these days. So those sort of people, unfortunately, very few. Yeah. Well, blokes like you, mate, while you're still around, well, we've all still got half a chance, haven't we? Definitely. <laughs> Thanks for talking with me. That's right. Now, you're welcome, Remington. Good on you, buddy. Thanks. Thanks. The DVD boxed sets of Classic Restos, along with Classic Restos merchandise, can be found via classicrestos.com.au. You don't go to many motoring events these days and don't see blokes from Shannon's. How are you, Phil? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Fletch. Yeah, great to be here. That's the way, mate. What do you think of today? Oh, it's just a fabulous day, isn't it? Um, a lot of people may not know that there's a lot of groundswell interest in these types of vehicles, old tractors, old trucks, uh, steam-powered. Obviously, it's a steam museum, so you'll see mainly steam-powered vehicles yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, we did notice there's one steam car running around down there, a Stanley steamer, yep. which is fabulous to see, plus the normal range of traction engines. I think it's amazing. I really do. I mean, where did all this start? I mean, it started with cars. I went to bikes. Trucks are involved. Now we've got farming machinery. Now we're back to the steam era. I mean, it really is colossal, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's right. It's, um, people collect all kinds of things, and some people may have had things like this sitting in their sheds 20 or 30 years ago and, A, not realise the value, or, B, perhaps being a, a little bit um, backward in wanting to show them, thinking they were nutcases. Good on you, Phil. Well, you want to watch yourself, mate. Don't get too hooked. You'll end up don't buying one of these tractors here today. I think I don't have one already. <laughs> you just never know what's lurking in a guy's barn. Good on you, Phil. Thanks, Fletch. Thanks for your time. Good day. Inside the museum here, there's just something about stationary oil engines. Aren't they awesome? This one beside me on my left goes back to 1934. To tell us more, here's John. Hello, Fletch. Hello, John. How are you, buddy? Good, mate. How are you? Oh, good, good. This is awesome. Tell us about this machine behind us. 1934, right? It's a, it's a Rustin uh, oil engine, runs on diesel, about 1934. Uh, this one here is made in India. It, Rustin originally were made in, in England, but they copied it and they made it in India under license from Rustin's in England. So it's an Indian engine, but very, very good engine. Tell us about the horsepower. How powerful is it, John? Horsepower, it's 17 horsepower, about 350 revs a minute. Wow. Yeah. It's, there, it's in such beautiful condition. When was it restored? It was restored about, I'd say, about 19, 1998 or something like that. What, what happens to all these old engines? I mean, these are the lucky ones that have been found. Exactly. What, what happens to the old ones? Most of the old ones, were, they went for scrap. Yeah, the scrap men got most of them. But uh, some of them, they've been saved and restored to, to their original glory, you know? Yeah. That's amazing. What sort of application were these used in? Well, this one here, the history of it, I've been told, it was driving a factory in Sydney somewhere. It used to drive the line shaft with, with belts, you know, because in those days they never had electricity like we have today. So they used to run a shaft with pulleys on it and drive machinery. That's what this one was doing. That's, that's, that's what I've been told. That's amazing. The engine next one, we'll go and have a talk about that, eh? Yeah, all right. All right. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. John, we have a national here. What year model is this? It's in the late 1940s. Yeah, or a very early 1950s. Probably it could be made in 1951. Because they made this model from about 1945 to about 1955. Right. Yeah. It came from Queensland. And it was driving a generator. Right. Making electricity. To run the town. Run the town? To run the, the whole town, but not, that's not, not the only one engine they had. I think they had about four yeah. engines next to each other wow. making electricity for the whole town. John, I love the flywheel. The flywheel is absolutely awesome. It is, it is, but that flywheel weighs about a ton. About a ton. One ton, yeah. Seeing the exposed crankshaft, the conrod and the piston, the actual skirt of the piston going out of the bore. Exactly. That, that's interesting as well. Exactly, because it's got a long stroke. Yeah, and it does about 350 revs a minute. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a 31 horsepower. There's nothing wrong with having a long stroke and that many RPM, is there, John? Yeah, because the longer stroke, the more power. And less revs and more power. More torque. Short stroke, more revs and, and not so much power. Yeah. You know, yeah. Absolutely amazing. How, I, I how restored all this. You did it yourself? Yeah, yeah, I restored all this by myself and it had some parts missing, which I had to make up. Yeah, yeah, big job, big job. And I made the frame for it because originally it was sitting on a block of concrete. Yeah, you know. You're amazing. Now, our, our last machine on the end, what brand is that? That's a Crosley Brothers made in Manchester, England. Okay, let's go and have a very, talk about very it. Very high class engine. All right. Manchester, Crosley's were big, big engine builders. Wow. Yeah. Have a go at it. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's, yeah. let's go have a talk about that. Talk about crankshafts, conrods, pistons, big flywheels. These things are amazing. What's the story with this one, John? The story of this one, it was, it was made in England, in Manchester, uh, about, about 19, 1921-22. And uh, it came to Sydney and it was put into a technical college. So the, the apprentices used to, the teacher used to strip the engine and build it and show them how the diesel engine is meant to work. So they learned their apprenticeship, okay? This engine was going for scrap. And then it was, and then it was offered to the club, Campbelltown Steam and Machinery Museum. And they, it's been donated to the club. And they had, the club had it here for a fair few years, maybe 15 years. And uh, no one has ever done nothing with it. They put it in a corner and no one was interested to do it up. So I decided to have a go at it. So I took it home and I restored it. And it had a few parts missing too, which they've been lost, you know, on the, you know, around the area somewhere. You know. These three engines, they remain here all the time. They stay here. They stay here all the time until until I I live, all right, as long as I live. That this it belongs to the whole club here, all right. The, that one and that one, I own both of them. Yeah. Well, John, this one, uh, it's a real credit to you to think that you have restored these engines. They really are superb. They're beautiful. They, they even look amazing. I, I just, I take my hat off to you, mate. Thanks, Flash. Yeah, no yeah. It's a, it's a pleasure. Thanks, John. No worries, mate. Thank you. Time now for Bruce on today's show, moving through this incredible day. How are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. You've got something a little bit more military happening here. What's going on with it? Well, green machine amongst the trees. That's what we need. And I brought my Dodge down for this weekend. It's beautiful weather. Get it out there and let the people see it. Mate, it's a tough-looking thing. What's, this, what's the deal with it? I mean, did you restore it? I did, I did. I've always wanted one of these since the late 70s. Since the Second World War, right? Well, am I looking that bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always wanted one as, as a child, and people have had them. They won't sell them to you because they're so good, they'll keep them. Yeah. I had to get one from the States. Yeah, right. Had to bring it out. Was it much of a process? Uh, well, legality and paperwork, once you cross that, you're fine. And being over 30 years old, yeah. being left-hand driving and leave it alone, yeah. or 25, can't remember now. Yeah. But uh, I've got it, it's mine, and uh, I'm keeping it. What's it like to drive, Bruce? Lovely, lovely. But before the days of the, the tollways and you had to put, throw the coins in the slot, you had to reach over a far way. They just pull out one of the guns and they let you go through for free. Well, my son can do that. That's his job. He's the armaments boy. Uh, I, I'd, I'll just drive it. <laughs> Mate, when you, you talk of a vehicle like this and you don't sort of uh, link it with lovely, you know, like to drive, you know, like you'd think it would be as rough as bags. No, nah, this has got long suspension, good shock absorbers, it, it keeps the, the beer still. Yeah, that's good, mate. That's good, and you can escape from the wife because it's camouflage, you drive into the jungle, she'd never find you. Ah, uh, well, GPS and telephones, <laughs> there's always a way. <laughs> yeah, who invented those? <laughs> Someone here, perhaps. No, nah, no, it's a pleasure. Now, Bruce, I like what you've done. Now, has it gone back a long way with you? Like, when you were a little guy, I mean, you got your son here today. Have you always had an interest with military vehicles? Since the uh, late 70s. Right. Yeah, it was Dad's fault. 
When you were about 38, roughly. Mm, yeah, that's yeah, it, no. yeah. <laughs> it came later in life, didn't that's it? right, see it's school reunion. <laughs> uh, and you have got your son here today. He's a nice little fella, mate. I tell you what, he's dressed He's dressed all in theme. He's he's right into it. He's uh, taken a bit of me and added his own. That's good. Yeah, that's good. exactly. Uh, Bruce, nice catching up with you, mate. Good to see the military people here today. Doing a little bit of military stuff lately. And that's a thanks, too, to Jan Thompson with KVE. She does a wonderful job, of course, to the big show at Corowa each year, which goes off. Section 8 at Corowa. Mm. We love it. Good on Gets you. us all together. That's the one. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Fletch. Thank you. How good was today's episode? I hope you really enjoyed just some of the Campbelltown Steam and Machinery Museum's field day on this week's Classic Restos. Now, keep in mind, classicrestos.com.au, that's the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show and other Classic Restos merchandise as well. While you're there, check out my major sponsors. They're waiting to help you. It's all there at classicrestos.com.au. Now, as I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV. And episodes can be seen at channons.com.au. <laughs> if there's anything that whirs, hisses, bangs and pops in all of its... Ma <laughs> and myself and whoever else wants to go in there, you can go in there if you want. Here we go. Okay. On this week's Classic... Okay. How good was that? Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, main lube lubricants and your local Repco store.